Hello, uh, my name is Doron. I recently participated in my first OTB tournament ever. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I was white in the first game and I was the lowest rated seed because I wasn't rated at all. I was against the bottom seed of the event. Uh, my opponent's name was Igor and he played as black. So first game of the tournament, I started with, I started with E4. That's what I always play as my first uh, move. My opponent already surprised me. I was expecting e5 or c5, but he went with the Pierce defense with d6. I went with d4, the main line so far. Knight to f6, knight to c3, and then c6. Uh, definitely a legitimate move, but I was already out of book. It's not a move that I encounter a lot and the, I don't encounter the Pirts a lot. I'm used to g6 or uh, something else. So I played bishop to e3. Uh, I'm used to going for English attack type setups like bishop to e3, f3, g4, stuff like that. So that's what I was aiming for at this point. Uh, my opponent played queen to a5. So now my knight that's defending the e4 pawn is pinned to my king so the pawn is no longer defended so i played f3 according to my plan defending the e4 pawn once again so the knight can take and my opponent played queen back to b6 attacking the b2 pawn uh, kind of strange moving the queen back and forth like that but i i'm not really good at pirt type setups i don't have a lot of experience i wasn't sure how to punish this I played the queen to c1. I was debating about whether or not to play queen to d2 and let my opponent capture the pawn in order to gain some compensation. But I couldn't really see anything after like queen takes b2, knight to b5 is not an option. I wasn't sure, I couldn't really evaluate the positions ahead. So I went with queen to c1. Both defending the bishop that the queen is indirectly aiming at and the b2 pawn. So my opponent played d5, uh, an unexpected move once again. It's kind of strange to move the d pawn twice in such a such a low amount of time, and also to open the center at this point. But I decided to not react and just continue developing with knight g to e2. Uh, I couldn't really see. I couldn't really see anything concrete after e5 or e takes d5. Uh, the engine does recommend e5 with a big advantage after knight f to d7. I didn't really see any benefit to it and I felt like I was closing the center when my opponent was in a problematic developing situation or at least he was heading towards one. So knight g to e2. My opponent took on e4 and I took back with the f-pawn. And now queen to a5, uh, full of surprises. So the queen went d8 to a5 to b6 and back to a5. We are on move 9 after my next move, queen to d2, because my opponent was once again pinning the knight and threatening the e4-pawn after the trade. So queen to d2 to break the pin and defend the e4 pawn with my knight. And my opponent made a really strange move. Uh, in hindsight, I realized that it was the top move of the engine in this position. But the, the next move after this one is really unintuitive. During the game, I, th I thought that this was a blunder because I missed Black's potential next move. He didn't play that. He didn't play the top line. He went with e5. So once again opening up the center uh, to my benefit. I'm the one that's ahead in development. I want the center opened. I guess it makes some sense. He wants to develop his dark squ squared bishop quickly and castle king kingside. I took the pawn obviously intending to open the position as much as I can. So now the top move of the engine is knight to g4. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, I can't really take use of my lead in development. 
my bishop is attacked, the pawn is attacked. I guess bishop to g5 could cause some problems, but still this is like total equality, not really a line that I understood. Instead my opponent took on e5 with his queen and headed to a clear disadvantage, a clear advantage for me. So in the next few moves, I was already considering how do I capitalize on my advantage. I felt like I absolutely have some advantage during the game. I started with castle queenside to include my rook and threaten mate on d8. My opponent developed and defended with bishop to e7. And I played bishop to d4. I was kind, kind of debating between bishop to, e, to d4 and f4. I just decided that this is better to aim towards the, the king side already in case black does manage to castle that way. Uh, queen back to a5. I think it's a totally legitimate move. I played king to b1. Uh, I thought that this move prevented black from castling. It doesn't. I mean, I saw that in hindsight, but it does if black castles, it is a very problematic position for him. If you can imagine black castles right now, I play knight to d4. The pawn can't capture the knight because then I take black's undefended queen. The, attack, the knight move discovered the x-ray between the queens, the stare down. So if black takes my queen on d2, I can take the bishop with check king to h8, and then I recapture the queen, and I'm up a piece. Uh, so it seems really problematic, but black has the move, queen back to d8, defending the queen, I mean, getting out of the attack on the queen, and defending the bishop on e7, and now I considered some knight takes e7, and maybe bishop takes in the future, or, or e5, but I thought that I had a clear advantage in, it, in this position. In fact, black could have castled, but and it would probably lead to a better position than the one we encountered in the game. Black played c5, and I went back to f2. In, in a bunch of points in this game, black could have played knight to g4 to harass my dark square bishop and gain a tempo, taking control over central dark squares as well, like the e5 potential push that I had to disturb his knight. Uh, he never went for it. I think he should have. Like at this point, it might have been a good move. To aim to centralize the knight and defend some squares. Now black played actually a good move. He played bishop to e6. So actually black played pretty well this game. I mean, he mounted threat after threat. He mounted a lot of tactical threats. And despite his shady development in the opening he's not clearly losing yet i mean i must have misplayed the opening in some way because for black to be able to play queen to a5 queen to b6 queen back to a5 queen to e5 we are on move 14 of the game and black moved his queen like four to five times he shouldn't be in such a good situation he shouldn't be able to castle and escape the center but uh Actually, he can't just get away with it. In this position, I do have the advantage, but in, with my next move, I lose it. Because black, is, black has a tactical threat with, with his next move, with bishop to e6. So let's say I make a nothing move. You can pause the video and try to realize what's that threat. So h3 or something like that, and black can play the move. Knight takes e4, x clam. So... I can take the knight. If I take the knight, let's try to calculate without moving the pieces. Knight takes on e4. Queen takes on a2 with check because the knight was defending. The king must move then to c1 and queen to a1 is checkmate. So if I can't take, it's still a problem because he's, he's, he just won a pawn. I, I'm not defending the pawn with anything but the knight. And he's forking my queen and my dark square dish my dark squared bishop so I need to do something about the threat I thought that my best move would be to defend the e4 pawn once again 
And this is actually a really expensive blunder that I made right now. I played knight to g3. Seems like a very nothing move. I thought it was a good move because I defend against the tactical threat and I prepare to develop my light, light squared bishop, which is my last piece to develop. It turns out that this just drives the game to full equality and black can now just play knight to c6 and my compensation is over. Not, comp not compensation, sorry, but my advantage, my advantage is completely over. Black is ready to play rook to d8 and neutralize my pressure on the d-file. My isolated pawn is looking kind of weak and black's queen, bishop and knight are all staring down at my king. Instead, I should have played, instead of knight to g3, uh, the simple move a3. The computer is also suggest suggesting a4. This move actually appeals to me a little bit more. Might seem a little counterintuitive, but it does make sense to delay black's attack. And I thought about a3 very briefly, just to make, make it so that the queen doesn't attack a2 anymore. So now there's only one attacker, the bishop, and it doesn't do anything. But I didn't like the fact that black can push b5. In retrospect, it's clear that this doesn't work. I mean, black is so far behind in development that this is just way too dangerous for him. And probably knight to f4 and I'm already winning. Much better than in previous positions. But b5, uh, sorry, b4 did intimidate me. I do think that one of my greater weaknesses is uh, evaluating and recognizing when my opponent's threats are valid. I don't like getting, getting attacked, so that's an important takeaway from this game. I played knight to g3 as mentioned, and my opponent... let me check... yeah, my opponent castled king side. So as I mentioned, knight to c6 was the best move. It was also the move that I looked at in the game and I was thinking while looking at it, like, okay, what do I have in this position? My opponent delayed his development so much and yet after knight to c6, instead of castling, it seems like my position isn't uh, as great as it was so far, like a moment ago. But after castling, I was actually pretty happy. I was considering... I was considering some kingside attack, some, some, something to maybe delay the development. I went for uh, knight to d5. So kind, kind of re redoing the threat from before. Although, as we discussed, it's not really a threat. Black can just return his queen to d8. But I was thinking that queen to d8, capturing the bishop, and maybe going queen to f4 or queen to f4 first, is a wonderful position for me. I was very happy to play in that position. Maybe queen to g5 could be good too, to attack this pawn twice, get the queen right up in black's face. I was happy with this development, but instead black played the game losing blunder. We, had, we could have continued with a long game, a long attacking game, but black played queen takes d2. So instead of continuing with a long fighting game, black played the game losing blunder, queen takes d2. After which I can take the bishop on e7 with check. Black has only one move, king to h8, and I recapture the queen on d2. So obviously a terrible development for black. I mean, I'm up a piece for no compensation. So. The game is practically over. Uh, black continued with knight to d7. I played bishop to b5. Um, just trying to hold on a little bit longer, but there's nothing really to play for because I have more active pieces. I have just an overall better position. He played rook f to d8 to defend the knight once again. I brought my knight back to d5 just to make sure that it doesn't get trapped or lost on e7, although it always has d square. And uh, black played b6 to solidify the c5 pawn. And 
we see knight to c7 just a simple fork to simplify the position trade some pieces so it's forking the rook and the bishop the bishop is defended but i will be glad to take it and win black's pawn structure create an isolated pawn and just get rid of another active piece for black rook to c8 knight takes e6 f takes e6 and now rook h to d1 we see the last piece uh, joining the attack just like uh, some sort of multi game now black played rook to c7 to defend the knight that's now pinned once again and i played e5 so kicking away the defend one of the defenders of the d7 knight and preparing to win that knight too my opponent tried to play knight to d5 to block the attack but i had calculated this and i played c4 to kick away the knight my opponent played knight from d7 captures on e5 i took the knight on d5 and now my opponent resigned that's the the end of the game up up now two pieces and uh, yeah it was a pretty clean win it could have continued to a more fighting and difficult game but i was obviously glad to win my first ever otb game uh, that's it that's it for this game i really hope you in enjoyed watching this uh, let me know what you thought about the game and that's it